Today we continue talking about regional languages in Russia. Last time I mentioned that Russia is an extremely diverse country and is home to over 190 ethnic groups with over 35 languages acting as co-official in several regions of the country. Many of these belong to the Turkic language family and three of them, namely Tatar, Bashkir and Chuvash, we discussed last time. However, before we start I'd like to point out an important thing about the Russian language itself. You see, in Russian we have two words for, well, Russian. One of them stands for the entire country and all the people. It looks like this. Rossiyski. For example, I can say Я российский гражданин to point out that I simply have a Russian passport. It says nothing about my cultural or ethnic background, just the whole legal thing. And then there is another word. Русский. It points out the Russian ethnicity, language and culture. I'm ethnically Russian, so I can easily say Я русский. So, even being born and raised in Russia, it's possible to be and not to be Russian at the same time. Many of my friends coming from the same town as I am are not Russian. That was one of the reasons for the initial hatred towards the Russian contestant at the Eurovision Song Contest 2021, Manisha. She's an immigrant from Tajikistan and the whole idea of a non-Russian ethnically person singing about Russian both ethnically and legally. People seemed insulting for some close-minded individuals. However, I digress. Back to Turkic languages. Without further ado, let's get started. <laughs> belongs to the Yakut sub-branch of the Uyghur Aguz branch of the Turkic language family. Aside from Yakuts, it is also spoken by Iwenki, Ivan and other peoples. Also, I gotta mention that these ethnicities are not European, so don't be surprised if you ever encounter a person with a Russian name and Asian looks. During the colonization of Siberia, many of the local peoples were Christianized and given Slavic names, so it's totally normal. Yakut is primarily spoken in the Yakutia Saka Republic, as well as in Krasnoyarsk and Khabarovsk Krais, and also Magadan, Yakutsk and Amur Oblasts. Yakut uses the Cyrillic script for writing, however, during the early years of the US, a sort of Latinization campaign began and the Latin alphabet was developed. However, these days it is neither used nor officially recognized. Dalgan also belongs to the Yakut sub-branch. It is primarily used in the Taimir Autonomous Okrug of the Krasnoyarsk Krai. This language is the closest to extinction with a little bit over a thousand speakers with very little to nothing done to stop this. Unfortunately, nearly all of the languages mentioned in this video, aside from very few ones, are currently on decline. And neither mentioned in this particular video are spoken in large metropolitan areas natively. They remain small and rural, with the number of native speakers constantly lowering. Belongs to the Kipchak Kuman branch of the family. It is spoken by approximately 450,000 people in the extremely diverse Republic of Dagestan. Other distribution areas include parts of Chechnya and North Ossetia. Up until the 20th century, it was sometimes used as a language for inter ethnic communication. Due to its history and original role in the past, it uses several alphabets for writing namely, you guess it, Cyrillic, Arabic, and Latin. And Cyrillic is, of course, the sole official one these days belongs to the Kyrgyz Kipchak branch, primarily used in the Altai Republic as well as in the Altai Krai and Kamerovo Oblast. Before 1948 it was also called the Oirat language. Of all the languages mentioned in this video, Altai is the second closest to extinction with only 55,000 native speakers. And yeah, the Cyrillic script is also used for writing. These are not all the Turkic languages spoken in Russia. Other examples include Naugai, Shor, Kalfar, Balkar, Kakas, and many others. That's it for today, folks. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like button and subscribe for more content. Have a nice day and see you later!